Brandon, he's my favorite quarterback from the 808, Jordan Tamu, uh, Pearl City, Hawaii native, 381 completions with the Rebels, 5,600 yards and 30 touchdowns over two seasons. Professionally, he played both in the XFL and in the NFL. Jordan, what's going on, man? How you doing? What's up, Seth? Doing good. Glad to be on here. Super blessed to be where I'm at right now. Awesome, man. Well, we loved watching you while you were here, getting the chance to catch up with you. It's going to be super exciting. You know, it's always the it's always the first thing that comes up, right? The the quarterback from Hawaii. So growing up on the island, how much did you know about the University of Mississippi and its existence here in the SEC? Honestly, this is how much I knew about the Ole Miss, but zero. <laughs> Coming out of Hawaii, I mean, I wasn't really watching the SEC like that. I was usually the West Coast guy. I was watching University of Hawaii. You know, Cali, uh, USC, Oregon. My dream school was Oregon, so I always wanted to go there. Uh, Marcus Mariota, Mariota actually kind of was like our, you know, the person we looked up to uh, as a quarterback, and everybody wanted to be like him. Some say I played like him and um, had no offers. University of Hawaii wanted me to just walk on and play a whole different position, was not about it. And my first time ever hearing – about Ole Miss is uh, at my junior college. I was watching a game. Um, ben Agamor, I mean, Coach Freeze was the coach, and they kind of hit me up out of nowhere. And I was like, okay, like, what is Ole Miss? What is University of Mississippi? Kind of looked it up, and I was like, okay, like, these guys actually look really good. And uh, saw that, I mean, I graduated high school 15, saw that they beat Batman and all that. And I was like, wow, this is this is actually a really, really cool school. So, um yeah, I never heard of it coming out of high school, only junior college. And that was like my sophomore year in college. So growing up, I mean, did you – growing up on an island, I mean, there's so much obviously to do that's not football related in Hawaii. Did you – I mean, surfing and whatever, did you grow yeah. up kind of with football fandom? Were you a – you know, were you a UH Warrior, you know, Rainbow Warriors fan? Or like what so was your I, feeling like? Yeah. Uh, my life as a kid, I mean, I'm, I was always outdoors. Um, I was barely inside watching TV. I wasn't barely, like, playing games. I was always, like, at the beach somewhere, you know, tossing football, playing volleyball. I was uh, – I mean, I've been playing sports my whole life. Baseball was my first love, and I was playing baseball. Boom, and then football would come around. So, I just – every year, i just been very active and very into sports and – it was either football or baseball. It was no in between. I had no time for basketball. Well, maybe in the mornings, like when I was in middle school, but that was probably it. I mean, everything else, like I love playing different sports, but everything else was just football, baseball, all until my senior year. And that's when I had to make my decision of which sport was going to lead me to a free education. Did you grow up as a pro fan? I mean, watching in Hawaii, obviously there's not a pro team. Similar to Mississippi, you know, we don't have a pro team. So yeah. college sports here are just so big. But in Hawaii, yeah. did you have a pro team that you really rooted for? Uh, I My dad did. And then I always just – I mean, I didn't have a favorite team at all. And, like, I always told myself – I mean, um, my nickname was actually Jet. So, I was just like, why not have – why not be a Jets fan? So, I was a Jets fan for, like, three or four years. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm not really uh, not really going to root behind this team for a, long, for a while. So, uh, <laughs> kind of just – bounced off of that and kind of just been like, you know, I always told myself like the first NFL game that I'm going to go to is the one I want to play in or, or be at on the sideline and um, made that happen. And it was a dream come true for sure. So never had a favorite team. My dad's a Chicago bears fan. Uh, always been, don't know why, but um, it's always been. Yeah. So growing up, I mean, you <clears throat> out of high school, I mean, technology is so different now. So recruiting is just so much different. Yeah. Now than even five years ago, 10 years ago, um, you went the junior college route. Was it tough to get recruited by schools, you know, in Hawaii that, that maybe are outside of that footprint or outside of the West Coast footprint? Was that a. Yeah, yeah. It, it was definitely hard. Um, mostly the guys that would come out of high school that are getting looked at are either private schools or, or like the big D1 schools in Hawaii. I went to a small D2 school. And that's probably like the smallest like you can get. And it was a public school. Um, I didn't go to many camps and the camps I got invited to, it was just in Hawaii. So like coaches had to fly to Hawaii and see that. And it was very hard because they, were, they came to look at other players. And like me being a small D2 school guy, I was 175 coming out of high school. 
I was really skinny, didn't have like much of an arm straight uh, until I started putting on muscle at my junior college. And um, it was very tough just trying to get recruited. And that junior college was my only offer. And a lot of guys can relate. It's either that or a D3 school. And most people just want to take the easy route, which is a D3 school. So, you know, I did my research. I was like, you know, a lot of guys made it out of junior college. I believe I'm a D1 quarterback and went after my gut. Tell us about that New Mexico uh, Military Institute experience. Is it exactly what it yeah. sounds like? I mean, strict schedules, you know, waking up early, getting a workout in, uh, it's tight ship being run. And and how did that experience help build you? You talked about it built some yeah. muscle, got you right for SEC play. But what was that experience like for you? How did it help? I mean, it was definitely tough. Uh, my first couple of weeks there, I mean, I wanted to give up. I wanted to quit. I wanted to go home. I'm like, I'm not fit for this. But I told myself, I'm like, you know, I can't give up on my family like this is a full ride I got to take advantage of it I mean it was tough getting up waking up bald looking in the mirror and you're like oh looks like I'm ready and like putting on a uniform and just like getting out to formation uh first time ever seeing snow first time ever have to deal dealing with the cold so like all this stuff was new to me so I mean I always every time I thought about it I just thought back about my family and it was like I'm doing this for them they don't have to pay a thing. I don't want them to pay a thing for my college education. And I've always been school first, football second. And um, let's see how far football can get me. So, I mean, it was it was a grind for sure. That's why we called it the grind house back in junior college. And it was the coaches definitely there made it a lot easy for me. Just like, hey, like if you need an excuse, just come and uh, just come to the locker and just be like, hey, you got football meetings, you got football stuff. So they definitely helped with that. So it sounds like you're a guy that's really just been building on betting yourself because you, you go the JUCO route. You come to Oxford when when Shea was essentially going to be entrenched as the starter. There's probably other paths yeah. you could have taken that would have been easier, but you decide to come to Oxford. Why did you make that choice? I uh, made that choice because, you know, it was my only SEC offer. And um, someone told me if you want to be the best, you have to play against the best. So I thought – I to myself like long and hard about this. I knew that I wanted to compete for the job. Um, and I wanted, I, I just believed in myself that I could be a D1 starter. And um, when I got there, I try to treat every day like I was starting. And um, the coach, Phil Longo sat me down and he was like, hey, like you're one ankle injury, one knee injury, one arm injury away from getting a snap in. And once you get in there, you, you gotta make the most out of it. And that kind of pushed me harder to, um, become, you know, better as soon as I step, stepped in uh, whenever he got hurt. So my whole life is all about opportunities. And um, once you get that opportunity, go make the best out of it. So you, you come from Hawaii to New Mexico to, to, to go to junior college. But what, what was the culture shock like coming from, you know, New Mexico, West Coast, yeah. Hawaii to small town, Oxford, Mississippi? What was that transition like? It was it was definitely different. Um, flying into Mississippi, I saw nothing but green and dirt. And then once I once I drove in Oxford, it was like completely different. And I was like, "Wow, this is amazing!" And the people, I mean, they're what 60, 70 percent of the reason why I came because I wanted to feel like at home. I wanted to feel like I was being loved, treated right. I wanted to feel like family to them. And as soon as I stepped on campus, as soon as I went to meetings. Uh, walking around town I mean everybody treated me with love respect and um, I mean still to this day they have respect for me and that's all I could ask for is is respect and um, I mean just that town in general they'll stand right behind you and support you and that's what I felt the whole time I was there so that's what me yeah I think it's kind of funny, Brandon, because like a backup quarterback is typically everybody's favorite player. Like it just it happens. <laughs> and then and then Jordan, it carried over once you you got into the game because Shea yeah. got hurt against LSU. You let a couple touchdown drives, and then you're the starter the next week against Arkansas. You were thrown into the fire of what your dream was playing in the SEC. What do you remember about those yeah. first couple games? Yeah, the first game, I mean, going in LSU game, I just remember Coach Luke just yelling in the in our offense to like huddle and just like, don't worry, we got this. Like, Hey, we got to step up right here. Let's go in there and just keep driving, play our game. And like, you know, that kind of gave me a lot of confidence was that speech and going into the next week, Arkansas, um, 
I remember me and Ben praying before the game. And, um, you know, I, he was just like, hey, make the most out of this opportunity. A lot of Hawaii guys are looking up to you right now. Do this for your state, for your family. And, you know, I was gonna just going to lay it all, up, all out on the line. If I see a gash, I'm going to try and take it to the house. And I did. And it was, like, amazing. A.J. Brown was over there celebrating with me. I mean, D.K., Lodge, everybody. And it was just, like, awesome just, like, having that feeling and just going crazy. So um, it was just an amazing feeling. Sorry, these dogs. <laughs> <laughs> <You're good. laughs> so once you get the starting job i mean you you kept it right i mean there, that that made uh, i think a lot of conversations for coaching staff you know uh, harder in some ways but easier in other ways but yeah. it, you had some great moments as a qb here with, with touchdown drives and big throws I mean, I, my mind immediately goes to the Kentucky throw with DK right there at the end of regulation to, to get the win. Yeah. But for you, when you look back on it, what are some of the favorite, like, moments, some of the favorite plays um, for Jordan? You know, that honestly was uh, – that honestly was, like, the best, um, you know, feeling ever was that Kentucky drive. Um, it was just a amazing feeling. That – was probably one of the top moments uh, for me was getting a game-winning drive. You know, that's every kid's dream to just, you know, throw the game-winning touchdown or catch the game-winning touchdown or, um, you know, like help your team lead the victory. And we had that also with Arkansas, two minutes left on our own three or four-yard line and driving 97 yards just to score a touchdown to get the win. Um, but, you know, every game has been one of my favorite. It's always – I mean, even my mom to this day, like whenever she watches Ole Miss, she's like, hey, I miss watching you play out there. I'm like, I miss playing out there too. I mean, it's such an amazing feeling. But, there, you, um, you, those little moments where you're just like with your family. Yeah. that no, And that's – and every guy we've had on here has talked about, you know, just the – it's more about the team and the camaraderie. Yeah. Everything. But but for you, I think the thing that I always thought was unique just from the outside, you know, watching from the outside was – I feel like the moment was never too big for you. And I always, yeah. I always appreciated that about you. And, 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 you know, there's, you see guys get in the games and their eyes are this big and, you know, they're just kind of, but you never seemed like that moment was too big. Did, did you have a welcome to the SEC moment where you were just like, wow, that, that was, that was cool. Um, it was probably, probably that, uh, I think Arkansas, my first start actually like, you know, actually playing and throwing passes and like being out there, like um, just hearing the stadium erupt. Um, and that was like such a, I was like looking around. I mean, even LSU game when I was, I was just in there just for a couple of drives. I mean, just looking around and seeing like, I'm like, I'm actually doing this. I'm actually making plays. I'm actually like playing football, the sport that I love in front of all these fans on live television, just, you know, family members just um, shooting me a text after the game, showing me videos. I mean, it's so cool to see myself, like, on the screen after the game, after the fact. And it was just – I mean, everything seemed so surreal. And, I mean, it, you were – like, it, it was big, but I didn't want to show it. I just wanted to, you know, just block everything out and just focus on my game. Yeah. Well, talk about surreal. You were not just thrown into the action, but you're – handed the keys to an offense that has guys like A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf, DeMarcus Lodge, Braylon Sanders, Elijah Moore, Dawson Knox yeah. is showing out. Let's get Dawson to the Pro Bowl, Everybody. by the way. Uh, yes, I mean, exactly. it, you, you're handed that offense. I mean, it seems like you couldn't make the wrong decision with who you were distributing the ball to. Yeah, I mean, it was such a – I was blessed with great receivers, and it was just an amazing feeling. Like, wherever I threw the ball, they would come down with it to catch it. Um and it was – they're just unbelievable. I mean, I knew from day one they are like, NFL bound, uh, destined to do greatness in the NFL, and um, they're doing it right now. So, super blessed to have them as receivers. It was fun throwing them, too. We've asked a lot of guys about this, but, you know, the talent that, that we have on the team right now, the current Ole Miss team, and just the, the innovative – you know, some of the innovative plays and different things like that with, with Kiffin and Levy's offense – do you, yeah. do you look at it and say, man, like, I could put up some really big numbers in this type of offense? I mean, what do you think about it as, as now a former Rebel watching this team? Yeah, I love it. Uh, I love the way they're so uh, spread out. I love the way they have so many different plays where 
everyone's getting action. Everyone like it's confusing the defense. And I, I love that. And like I always said, a bunch of people always said they're like, you would have killed it in this offense. And I was like, I know it was, looked so much fun to be a part of, too. I mean, you know, Matt getting to run the ball, um, him making really smart reads, all that. And it's just all about um, execution. And I feel like this year they're doing ex executing every play well. And I definitely would have loved to be in that offense, no doubt. Well, you mentioned you mentioned Matt just now, but, but you know, watching him this season, you you were around him as a freshman when he comes in. Yeah. What was he like then, and what have you kind of seen from the outside? And I know you you come back some and around and around him some, but what have you seen with him from from his freshman year to kind of where he is now? Yeah, from his freshman year, uh, he came in. He's you know, such with such confidence, uh, everyone knew he was going to be the guy once I left, and he even knew that. So, I mean, he uh, even went to two reps. Like, he went out there and went all out and kind of showed that he belonged in SEC, and he did. Um, you know, he made a few mistakes in practices and, like, little stuff here and there. But as time progressed on throughout the years, I felt like he's learned and he's progressed and that he's better than he's ever been. And, um even now, he wants it more than ever, and it shows. Um, but he's always been a hardworking guy since the beginning, since he was a freshman in the in the room, and he was just patiently just waiting for his turn to be the starter. So, um, super happy for him and everything he's accomplished. But he's he's been hardworking. He learned from his mistakes, and he's getting better. You talked about achieving your dream and, and getting to the NFL, and, and you did that. You you undrafted out of. Ole Miss, go to the Texans uh, for your first yep. season. And, and then that path leads you to the St. Louis Battlehawks of the XFL, a league in yep. which you really became a phenom. You took that league by storm. What was that experience like playing in, in that second league here in the United States? Yeah, uh, that second league, the XFL, I didn't know what was going to happen, but I just knew it was another opportunity. And I just wanted to, you know – everyone was kind of hyping it up and I was getting more excited as the season was going to start. And I was just, you know, I was just like, you know what? I'm like, you know, I'm named the starter guy already. Like I'm like one of the eight quarterbacks to be picked first. And like, I'm just like super excited. I'm probably one of the youngest guys too. And I was just, you know, super excited to play the, play the sport again and like be out there, lead a team. And I had so much fun. The city of St. Louis, love them, love the fans. We had like probably the best fans in the XFL, social media wise and in that stadium, in the dome. And it was just like such an amazing feeling just to be out there. Great uniforms, great coaches. We had a great offense. I mean, it was just all around awesome to be a part of. So um, hopefully, they, I mean, they are coming back in like next year. So um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, yeah, everybody talks about the NBA when it comes to the, yeah. the sports being shut down during COVID-19. But for you and your teammates who are all trying to get tape and show that you could give something to an NFL franchise, what was that yeah. moment like when, when everything shut down and the league essentially folded from the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, it definitely sucked. We were, you know, we're on a hot streak. We're going to go to Tampa next week. And uh, they, that's when they told us that COVID is going to – I mean, we we're going to shut everything down. And, you know, that definitely put everybody, I mean, made everybody kind of sad. And uh, like, damn, like we're having like such a good season. And um, but at the same time, it opened opportunities for most of us. And I'm glad everyone had a shot or somewhat a shot. And that's what kind of got my eyes uh, with Kansas City. So I was with Kansas City last year and it was amazing. That was such a good opportunity to Dude, just to be behind Patrick Mahomes, see how he, like a starter in the NFL, trains, how he goes to meetings, how he answers questions, asks questions in meetings. So it was awesome to see that D1, I'm not D1, but that NFL starter. So, um, you know, everything's all about opportunity, and I made the best out of that, and hopefully I can go somewhere and, and continue building it. So. Yeah, and you talk about uh, the the fan base and the support you had from St. Louis. What make your pitch to fans across the country because the USFL is coming back into the fray. XFL is trying to make a return in 2023 that there's a need for these secondary leagues, whether it's guys bouncing back and forth between the NFL or guys that are still believing they have a shot to, to get there and show an NFL franchise, what they have to offer, make a pitch to people here. Like this is why those leagues need to be supported. That's why we have to have these secondary leagues. 
yeah, these secondary leagues are amazing, especially with young guys, uh, older guys as well. I mean, it creates a lot of job opportunities for even coaches, uh, people who want to be offense coordinators, defense coordinators, um, just just guys like me, just to live our dream again and continue to play and support our love and having fans in those cities. I mean, football cities are all around this, all around this country and a lot of fans just love hopping on that team and like really supporting them. And they will go all out just to support that team. And it just creates like a whole different environment. It doesn't have to be the NFL. It doesn't have to be, I mean, everyone loves football and I feel like this country is a football country. So wherever we're at, And no matter what state, everyone is going to hop on and support. And I feel like having that secondary league is going to grow football even more in the states. And it's going to give a lot of people uh, more opportunities and more jobs. And I mean, that's a blessing in itself. It's playing the football again and, you know, just doing what we love. So. Well, you're a perfect example of, of, you know, deserving a shot. I mean, you had contracts with Kansas City and Detroit after the XFL. Um, but my yeah. question is, you know, what is the, what's the difference? You've been in NFL camps, you've been in a college camp. What is the difference between kind of the three different camps that you've been in as it relates to just the professionalism? You know, one of the things that, yeah. I, that I've always thought was unique is I have buddies that played major league baseball and they talk about, you know, the difference in going to like a summer league or whatever, and then going to yeah. actual MLB spring training is just completely different. What, what are those yeah. three experiences like? Yeah, I mean, for football, I think it's all kind of the same. It, it's just, uh, you know, the different levels is, uh, is like, I mean, personal-wise, it's different. I mean, college, I mean, it's just all about um, each level you go up. It's like different speeds, different strengths. Um, college, you can pick out the weakness, like in those, like, defenses. And then when you get to the XFL, there's little – there's like probably one or two guys. And then when in the NFL, everyone's good. So it's like really hard to pick out, but I feel like camp wise, the offense, you're, you're there six o'clock in the morning, you leave eight 30, nine o'clock at night. And I feel like football is kind of just a one, uh, they're all, they all kind of do the same thing on, on, on picking the offense, um, doing their playbooks, going to workouts, going to practice and then doing it all over again the next day. So I think training for football is kind of the same, but it's just different levels of, of uh, athletes out there. So currently free agent, but for you, what, what do you think is the biggest challenge in, in earning and maintaining that spot in the NFL? You know, just being ready. Um, there's a lot of free agents out here that I train with and, you know, one gets a workout and he's good. He has to fly up the next morning and, um, do that and even me I'm ready for a phone call if I need to fly out tomorrow or today I'm doing it and I feel confident that I am ready and each one of us we go out there we work out two three times a week we throw two three times a, a week just to stay ready just to be just to be sure because once our name is called we can just go in there try out and then hopefully get signed and that's kind of our free agency goal is to stay ready you know we can do other things on the side but our main priority is to stay ready and focused. So catch us up. Other than that, I mean, I know you. How, how often do you get back to Oxford? How often do you get back to back to the island? I mean, I mean, I know you're probably trying to stay yeah. close just in case you do get that call. And I know you've been to Oxford a couple yes. of times this year. But catch us up on on what else yeah. is going on with Jordan. Tell me. Yeah, I just uh, been in Nashville um, majority of the time. I came out here um, early last summer. I mean, May. I was still in Kansas City. So I was just out here working out, training. And, you know, I just found it a good spot where, you know, most of my friends were too. So it made it easy for me if I needed a workout partner, I'll work out with them if I needed them to catch. I mean, me and Dawson were out here the whole summer training and um, throwing. Javon Patterson uh, moved out here with us too. Uh, Thomas Dillard is actually here for two to three uh, months, just off season. So, um, you know, we kind of stayed, stayed close and, uh, have those guys out here. I'm also working a side job at True Mav Fitness. I'm also like a trainer where I train classes. I, um, you know, something fun to do on the side and uh, they wouldn't care if a team calls and I can just leave. And, you know, you guys should come out and do a class if you guys are ever in Nashville. It's, it's a lot of fun. 
I love doing it. I get to write my own workouts and I try to apply football and what I learned on my workouts and to try and apply it to that class. So I do that on the side just to get a little extra cash here and there. And, but yeah, I just been in Nashville this entire time. I get to go home. I'll probably go home in Hawaii, like January, February after the holidays. And then, um, you know, Oxford, I try to go for the big games or I got to be there for the retirement of the number 10 Jersey. And, nice. and it was awesome. Like just seeing that number 10 retire, I uh, talked to Eli about it. And he was like, you're one of the great, great ones to wear 10 right after me. And I was like, that kind of meant a lot to me. And felt like my number was retiring too. Out there. <laughs> a lot of people said it was, awesome. yeah. yeah. So it was, it was a good, it was a good feeling, good opportunity too, to do that. So I'm loving it. That's great, Jordan. And do not offer us workouts. I think you'd put both of us six feet deep if you tried to put us through a <laughs> nice football workout. But, hey, we're, we're excited to uh, continue to see what's what's next for you. We know you can offer something to somebody as a quarterback uh, in, in a league here into the future. So stay ready, like you said, you're trying to. And, and we'll keep catching up with you and, and following along with what's next for Jordan Tommy. Appreciate your time today. Yes, thank you, guys. Thank you, Seth. Yeah, howdy, Toddy. Stop in the